The Gravity Flow Technique for Epidural Analgesia and Anesthesia, Gilbert J. Grant, M.D., Department of Anesthesiology, New York University School of Medicine. The information presented in this video is for educational purposes only. The producer of this video assumes no liability for the use of the techniques described herein. The gravity flow technique was first described in 1991 by doctors Shaul Cohen, David Amar, and Hideo Nagashima. The gravity flow technique uses a visual cue to confirm that the tip of the epidural needle is indeed positioned in the epidural space. This confirmation improves the success rate of epidural analgesic and anesthetic techniques. The gravity flow technique may be used to administer analgesics and anesthetics into the epidural space. Because the medication is administered gradually by gravity, rather than forcefully injected under pressure from a syringe, the gravity flow technique enhances the safety of administering medication through the epidural needle. The gravity flow technique is quite simple to perform. We will now review in detail the preparation and procedures necessary to master the gravity flow technique. To perform epidural analgesia or anesthesia using the gravity flow technique, the only additional equipment needed besides a standard epidural catheterization kit is a sterile stopcock and sterile intravenous extension tubing. For simplicity, we prefer to use intravenous extension tubing with an attached stopcock. We open this device onto the epidural kit prior to beginning the epidural procedure. Alternatively, a separate sterile stopcock and sterile extension tubing may be used. Prior to insertion of the epidural needle, the syringe and extension tubing are primed with the analgesic or anesthetic medication of choice. The epidural space is identified using the method with which the operator is most familiar. Next, the tip of the extension tubing is firmly attached into the hub of the epidural needle. The stopcock is then turned to isolate the syringe contents and to expose the fluid within the extension tubing to the atmosphere. If the tip of the epidural needle is indeed located in the epidural space, the fluid will passively flow through the epidural needle and air will be entrained into the extension tubing. We only allow a small amount of air to enter the tubing, approximately 1 ml. The crux of the gravity flow technique is observation of fluctuation of the level of the fluid within the extension tubing in sync with the patient's heart rate. This fluctuation provides indirect visual confirmation that the tip of the epidural needle is indeed positioned in the epidural space. This fluctuation of the fluid level is caused by the transmission of pressure waves generated by the cardiac cycle back through the venous system and into the epidural venous plexus. To limit the amount of error that enters the extension tubing, once the descent of the fluid column is observed, the syringe and extension tubing are lowered beneath the level of the epidural needle insertion. If the tip of the epidural needle were to be located within an epidural vein, or if it had perforated the dura, we would expect blood or cerebrospinal fluid to flow back into the extension tubing, displacing the anesthetic solution out of the stopcock. If no return of blood or cerebrospinal fluid is observed, the stopcock is then rotated so that the atmosphere communicates with the syringe. The plunger is then withdrawn to its internal stop near the top of the syringe barrel. The stopcock is now adjusted to a 45 degree angle in order to isolate the connection between the extension tubing and the syringe barrel. Using a moderate amount of force, the plunger is now carefully removed from the syringe barrel, leaving the syringe to act as a reservoir of anesthetic solution. 
It is important that the connection between the syringe barrel and the extension tubing is isolated so that when the plunger is removed, the negative pressure created is not transmitted to the tip of the epidural needle, where it could tent the dura and tear it. Once the plunger is removed, the stopcock is adjusted so that the system is closed to the atmosphere, thereby allowing the solution to flow from the syringe through the extension tubing and epidural needle and into the epidural space. Fluid fluctuation within the extension tubing in sync with the patient's heart rate is again noted. In fact, this is the key feature of the gravity flow technique, observation of fluid fluctuation in the extension tubing in sync with the patient's heart rate, provides indirect visual confirmation that the aperture of the epidural needle is indeed located in the epidural space. If this fluid fluctuation is not present, the epidural needle should be recited. On many occasions, we have noted that following a perceived loss of resistance, fluctuation of the fluid level did not occur, indicating that the needle tip was not in the epidural space. In all these cases, fluid level fluctuation was obtained by repositioning the epidural needle. If fluid fluctuations are noted, the reservoir is held at an elevated position so that the desired volume of fluid can be delivered into the epidural space. After the anesthetic solution has drained into the epidural space, the tip of the extension tubing is removed from the hub of the epidural needle and the epidural catheter is threaded in the usual manner. The gravity flow technique improves epidural success rate by providing indirect visual confirmation of the location of the tip of the epidural needle after a standard loss of resistance technique is used. The gravity flow technique is useful for mentoring trainees and it is especially helpful for patients with challenging anatomy. The gravity flow technique enhances the safety of epidural anesthetic administration, as the anesthetic solution is not injected under pressure, but rather flows passively into the epidural space by gravity. Thus, if the needle aperture is positioned partially within an epidural vein, the subarachnoid space, or the subdural space, the solution will preferentially flow to the area of lowest resistance, that is, the epidural space. Here is a brief review of the procedures involved. The epidural space is located using a loss of resistance technique. The extension tubing and syringe, which have been filled with anesthetic solution, are attached to the hub of the epidural needle. The stopcock is turned to allow the atmosphere to communicate with the extension tubing and fluid fluctuation with the heart rate is observed. The syringe is lowered beneath the level of the epidural needle insertion and the tubing is observed for return of blood or CSF. The stopcock is adjusted to open the syringe to atmosphere and the plunger is withdrawn to its internal stop. The stopcock is rotated one quarter turn to isolate the syringe from the extension tubing and the plunger is carefully removed. Fluid fluctuation with the heart rate is again confirmed. The solution is allowed to drain into the epidural space. The extension tubing is detached from the epidural needle hub. The epidural catheter is threaded into the epidural space.